my fault. I, my microphone was disabled for Instagram, so I, I went in and checked it. So uh, totally my bad. I'm so sorry. Oh, no problem. I, I just, I'm just glad you're uh, talking to me today. It's pretty awesome. Oh, man. Thanks so much for the invite. I really appreciate it. How's your day going so far? I had good. I had two cups of coffee, so I'm good, brother. <laughs> How about yours? Uh, pretty good, pretty good. It looks like you got quite a collection of Karate Kid and Cobra Kai memorabilia behind you. Yeah, uh, I've met a few of them, and then the other ones I've just got offline. So you know, pretty big fan. How long uh, did you did you become? Were you a fan before the Cobra Kai series, uh, and discover the movies afterwards, or were you, did you like the movies first and then just go into Cobra Kai? So when I was probably like four or five, I got like the DVD set of the original three. So I grew up on the original three films. <laughs> okay, got it. And then I watched. Then I watched the next Karate Kid later on, but uh, yeah. Well, you know, in defense of the next Karate Kid, you know, Hilary Swank, I did, I believe she did win two Academy Awards in films after that. So I think uh, that's an interesting start to her career, but she's certainly doing pretty well. Yeah. Um, so how did you get the audition for you audition for Mike Barnes initially, right? Yes, sir. Actually, um, I was in bed on a Saturday morning or something like that. And my buddy calls me up and goes, dude, you got to get out of bed. We got to go to this uh, audition for Karate Kid 3. And I'm like, what? What's going on? And he goes, ah, they're looking for the next villain for the next movie. So um, he comes, picks me up. We go down to Burbank, California. There's this huge line of about 1,500 people. Um, and I didn't know at the time that Sean Kanan, I didn't know Sean Kanan at the time. Yeah. But, you know, um, so uh, we get in line and I'm just thinking, oh, man, this is this is like, ugh, how, how, how does anybody ever have a chance? The director, John Avelson, comes out with his cameraman, goes down the line and starts dismissing people, you know, like nicely, but saying, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah. And then I'm pretty sure they're going to pass me up and he stops. And then my buddy, he starts giving me the elbow. Like, dude, dude, he's coming over here, you know. <laughs> and um, sure enough, he walks to me and he goes, hi, what's your name? And how old are you? And I said, I'm 22 years old, sir. And he says, well, you look a little old to be, we're looking for somebody who's kind of like just out of high school or, you know. And so yeah. I was bummed, but I, you know, I was able to give him my, my, my picture and resume and he took it. And uh, I thought that was that. And a week later, I get a call from his casting director, Carol Jones. And she says, you know, we haven't cast Mike Barnes yet. And we'd like for you to come down and read. So I get down there. I read for her. I do the audition. You know, it's that whole scene where it's like, no, you don't understand. I want your title. You know, yeah. I need you to sign this application. Yeah. And I didn't have much acting experience at the time. And, uh, you know, as I've said in other interviews, I think I gave the worst audition ever. You know, it was just yeah. terrible. You know, and I thought I did pretty good at the time. And, you know, and Carol is a nice person, you know, rest in peace. But she was like, Mr. Ford, that was very good. And she shook my hand. And so, so I'm thinking, hey, she, she said I was good. I'm in. Yeah. And I thought about it later on, Levi. And I'm just like, Oh man, that was terrible. You know, just some of my choices and things. So, you know, a month goes by and I'm thinking, oh, what's done? Um, I go out for a jog, I get a call and then I, I, there's a message and it says, you know, Mr. Ford, we want you to come down and, um, you know, we cast the part of Mike Barnes, but we need you to kind of play a henchman. And I was like, I can do that. I'll take that. So go down the next day. I meet with Pat Johnson on the set of the, it was the, the Columbia Warner Brothers set at the time. And uh, as you know, Mr. Johnson was the referee and yeah, you know, stunt coordinator yeah, and everything. Stunt coordinator, legitimate black belt under Chuck Norris, you know, I mean, really legitimate martial artist. And I meet with him and he says, well, you look fine to me, but it's really up to John. You know, he's the director. And so um, we wait around. Pretty soon, Ralph Macho shows up on the set, you know, and I'm yeah. like, oh, my God, it's Ralph Macho. And so... You know, he comes up to me and he goes, hey, you know, Pat introduces me to him and says, you know, um, uh, and he says, hi, I'm Ralph. And I'm like, hi, I know, I know who you are, yeah. <laughs> you know, and he was cool, you know, um, Fumio Demura, Mr. Miyagi's stunt double was there and he and I had a history, you know, I used to compete in his tournaments and, you know, we had become friends and um my mom's from Japan. He's Japanese. And he's like, hey, what are you doing here? And so I was like, hey, Mr. You know, since they, you know, I'm here to audition for the, um, for, uh, you know, being a, like a stunt person or henchman. Yeah. And he's like, oh, okay. And then pretty soon John Avelson shows up and they say, John, 
uh, at the time I was just Christopher Ford. I changed my name to William years later. And he was, this is Chris Ford. Um, and, you know, we, we think he can be a good henchman for Mike Barnes. And then John looks at me and he says, yeah, okay, I buy it. <laughs> so I'm thinking, wow, he didn't remember like six weeks ago when he said I look too old. But yeah. I think they were just really um, pressured. You know, it was like, we got to yeah. get this thing going. You know, we got to get this thing going. We're, we're running out of time. So they took me. You know, I had short hair at the time, obviously. And so it was really surreal because it's like, oh, my God, I just got hired to be in a Karate Kid movie. And it was yeah. like life changing for me and says, OK, yeah, we're, you know, hang around. We're going to do some rehearsals. And, um, you know, for the next month or so, I was just kind of hanging, you know, showing up to the set every day. And they were, were going over fights, rehearsing stunt scenes, things like that. And, and I was on the payroll as, as a result. And um, it was just... Um, just the, the most amazing time of my life. I'm one of the most amazing things. It was, it was, it was certainly life changing. And um, I am so grateful to be part of the franchise still. I mean, it's still, I'm getting to talk to you because I was in this movie 31 years yeah. ago. So it's a really, it's a really cool thing. And, um, and that's how I got involved with the Karate Kid movie. So uh, like when you're in the bonsai shop, you can, wasn't a scene cut out of you and Mr. Miyagi fighting? Oh my God! You know, dude, you've done your research. Yeah, I um, the 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 first thing, the way that we shot it was, you know, we go in there, we harass Jessica and Daniel, and Mike me, kicks her. Me, oh my gosh! You know, even I was watching that movie. I'm going, dude, you kick the girl. Oh my yeah. God! This is awful. You know, um, but to their credit, you know, they're they're great performers, and you know, Robin was just, you know, such a sweetheart, and and you know. He didn't, you know, I, Sean didn't hurt her. It was, it was all the yeah, stuff. Yeah. So Miyagi comes through the doors like a superhero. You know, he comes in through like, like Batman or something. Right. Yeah. And, you know, we, we go and attack him and you can see it in the film. I go and it looks like I'm going to go throw a punch at him, which I did in the original take. So I throw a punch at him. Miyagi blocks it. And he does like a, an arm bar on me that a standing arm bar and he pushes my elbow down and I'm supposed to fall on my back yeah on the floor and that's what they shot in fact i have a photo that i can share with you later on where it's kind of blurry but it was taken where set. you're I'm punching gonna... him you're punching yeah. him out. yeah 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 and so then i you know we run out we jump in the car we you know we go past the train uh and that was it when we saw the final cut they had cut my part out of that and i never found out why and my guess is probably it just didn't sell you know like it yeah. just looked probably too fake or something because you know when i took the fall i probably like did it like a professional wrestler where i like jumped up and yeah you know i i probably could have undersold it a little bit more i don't know but um yeah they they cut that i was a little disappointed but um because people were like well wait a second weren't you supposed to did you look like you were going to hit him and i'm like hey man i just went for the car then you know <laughs> so yeah. that's that's correct it got cut out don't you say like very quietly like mike come on let's get out of here or something like that that was actually, you know, it's been a long time, you know. It kind of sounded like you. That's why I wasn't sure. It might have been. It might have been. But it might have been Jonathan also, you know, um, because they had called me in after the film was done to do um, voiceover looping for my lines. You know, so when I say you take off, I said it on set, but um, they needed me to re-record stuff. So I was in the studio with the headphones looking at the screen doing ADR and I, I remember saying you take off, but I also, um, they said, okay, now you're in the car, and you're doing donuts, you know, say some stuff. So I was going, yee ha ha, woo -hoo -hoo. Yeah. You know, I was doing that thing. And um, I'm not sure if I said, Mike, let's get out of here. I'm not sure if that was mine or Jonathan's line, to be honest with you. But you know, um, if you think it was me, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take it. <laughs> yeah. So how did you get your dojo started? And how long have you had that? Okay. Um, my dojo in Torrance, California is called Kaizen Dojo. Kaizen is the Japanese word, word that um, comes to, it, it kind of means continual improvement. So, you know, um, after Karate Kid, I, I didn't, I had trouble finding acting work. You know, it was one of those things where it was like, okay, man, I am set. I got it in a big movie and I'm going to get an agent and I'm going to like, you know, be in a bunch of movies now. And that just, it was, it was hard for me. I, I was like, man, I just can't even get an audition. I just went through this, real period of you know they say hollywood is feast and famine and i experienced a lot of famine 
Yeah. So I was forced to, uh, you know, I, I did other jobs, you know, and, and driving, delivering pizzas, delivering messages, you know, working, you know, odd jobs, you know, cleaning, you know, working for theaters where I picked up trash and things like that. Um, that was a great experience for me because I got to experience all these things and it really taught me to be appreciative and be humble, you know. Um, you know, and the, the other thing is, you know, you can't rely on somebody else to determine your fortune. You know, at the end of the day, it's like, it's, it's really like, hey, if you really want something, go for it. You know, yeah. you don't give up. And sometimes, you know, you got to wait and you got to pay your dues in other ways. In the meantime, I began studying acting so that, you know, I didn't suck as an actor as much as I did back in that audition. And, you know, I really, really wanted to pursue acting and people were saying, dude, you should do action movies and things like that. And, you know, do martial arts movies, that's your way in. And, you know, at the time I was like, I want to be a real actor. I, I don't want, I don't want to be a martial yeah. artist. I want to be a real actor. And, you know, the thing is, is that what I should have done is embrace that and said, well, you know, here's another opportunity to work. And, you know, but I, I delved, delved into just, you know, so I started taking acting classes, reading books on acting and, and then, you know, working all these odd jobs and I was neglecting the thing that was my ticket in. So years later, um, around 2000, I had been teaching, you know, like off and on since 2000, the year 2000, you know, teaching in some way, some more form, you know, various places, almost like being a gypsy, like uh, or vagabond, you know, sort of nomadic, you know, like, I'm going to go to these various places, you know? So um, I think um, at some point I said, you know, I got to do something that's going to create stability and also, you know, return to what is a real strong part of me. It's like, look, I have to return to my roots, you know, and karate, karate, martial arts is a huge part of me. I've never stopped training, but I, had to embrace it. It's like, look, this is a, something that you cannot run away from. This is part of you. And I have a gift that I can teach this with a lot of patients, especially the kids. And um, I can really, really benefit from um, doing this. So that's how I started. Uh, you know, my, my wife at the time was pregnant with our daughter who is nine years old now. And she was concerned, you know, she was like, well, you know, she was working at the time. Yeah. Um, but she said, well, you know, you know, the baby's coming and I'd really like to be able to spend time with her and not have her be in some sort of childcare or, you know, or burden our parents with this. And I said, well, I'll just go back to teaching. You know, I had taken a couple years off and said, yeah. you know, I'll just teach, teach at night. You, you know, you work in the day. I watch our daughter. Then when you come home, you watch our daughter. I go ahead and that's kind of how it all started. And then I rediscovered my passion and my love for teaching and my love for kids. And, um, you know, love, love being a student as well as a teacher. And then that's how that came about. And as a result, I started doing fundraisers for St. Children's, St. Jude Children's Hospital through, um, you know, through the dojo. And um, I was able to, I got this idea to start producing my show 52 Masters. And so because I returned to teaching in martial arts and embraced the philosophy and, and you know, really embraced my roots again, the opportunity started coming uh, for film again. And, um, you know, then Cobra Kai hit and all of a sudden there's like this renewed interest in the original movies. And I've been invited to be on shows and podcasts like yours. And it's just like, wow, you remember me and you remember my character and people are like, oh, dude, you were Dennis. And, you know, and, and I'm just like, wow, people actually remember me. <laughs> so I'm really grateful for opportunities like this where I get to talk to people. And the fans have been just really, really fantastic, you know, just so kind so supportive and um i i love doing shows like this and just you know being able to share with people who, who support the series and, and support me i don't know if this was true or not but did you actually like practice like the choreograph like play like mike barnes and daniel during like rehearsal and stuff that is true that is true sir um basically um it was me pat johnson and the uh, screenwriter, Robert Mark Kamen, who, as you know, is also a martial arts, a karate black belt. And what we did was they were, they were putting together that final fight blow by blow. And basically Robert Mark Kamen would play Daniel. I would play Mark. I would play um, Barnes, right? Yeah. 
And then Robert Mark Kimmon would step out, Pat Johnson would come in, and then he would look at it, you know. And I don't remember them taping this. I think they must have been, but I don't remember it. And that was, sure would be great if that footage existed somewhere. So, um, but basically they had me playing both parts at times where I would step in. So I learned the choreography for Mike and I learned the choreography for Daniel. I was basically kind of um, the person that they would use to help hash out the moves during rehearsal. That is Sir, true. So um, do you have any uh, new episodes coming up for 52 Masters? I just shot a couple yesterday. One is with uh, the pi pioneer of um, women's fighting. Uh, her name is Graciela Casillas. She is a, um, she, she, you know, she came out during the, uh, I think it was the late seventies. Now this is prior to MMA. You know, this is prior to Gina Carano. This is prior to Ronda Rousey, you know, prior to Holly Holm, prior to Amanda Nunes, all prior to all that, you know, the, the, the current UFC and everything. You know, and she held sim titles simultaneously in kickboxing and boxing, and she retired undefeated. She's um, practicing Filipino martial arts right now, and so she is going to be in my next my next episode. And she's, yeah, she's, she's fantastic. Yeah, I really enjoy those, especially the one with Ron Thomas and Vidal. Those are really good. Yeah, Ron is just a heck of a nice guy, and, you know, they both are. And they're both legitimately the real deal, you know. And the running joke with me and Ron is like, "Don't touch my neck, man! Don't touch my neck," because yeah. he knows where to, you know, to put those pressure points. But you know, um, they're just such, you know, knowledgeable martial artists. Um, and I knew, you know, there were a lot of requests to to have them on the show, and so we were able to make that happen. And um, they are amongst my favorite episodes. Just, just love those those guys and have much respect for them as, as martial artists. So what was it like to be a part of that reunited apart episode with Josh Gad? Oh, that was so much fun, you know, and, 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 they, and they reached out to me and it was just such fun to be a part of that. And um, that was, that was really, I, I, I got a big kick out of it when, you know, they were doing that whole thing, you know, are you going to be a part of this LaRusso, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You know, then he's, his mom comes on and she's like, you know, uh, he's like, ma, you know? <laughs> but, um, I, uh, as you know, I, I got a chance to thank Ralph on there for 31 years line. later. Uh, you know, as you, Ralph, Ralph was the dude responsible for giving me my line in the movie. You know, I was, I was brought into the union. I, really, I wasn't supposed to have any lines. I was just, you know, like, you know, henchman number one, right. Um, you know, but, but they let me choose my own name. So I chose Dennis, like Dennis the Menace. Right. And then, um, you know, we're on set in the bonsai shop and Ralph says to John, Hey, can you give this guy a line? Because I can't, I need something to play off of. And, you know, and Ralph was being very generous. And so John says, okay, you say you take off and then you push him. And that's how that came about. And I, you know, afterwards, of course, said, Hey, thanks a lot, Ralph. That was really cool. And he's like, yeah, 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 no problem, man, no problem, right? Now, I've been wanting to really, really, you know, tell him how much I appreciated it for years, you know. And so yeah. when we did Reunited Apart, that was my opportunity. And, you know, I was just so, so happy. And I think he was, too, if you saw his expression. Um, you know, I, I never forgot that. Um, that's very generous of somebody of his stature to do at that time, you know, and, and, and he didn't have to do that, and he did that for me, and I never forgot it. So Ralph's always going to be, Mr. Macho is always going to be one of my favorites. You know, he, he just he did me right. You know, and um, when when you know, when somebody does something something like that for you, you know, you, you should always be appreciative. But Josh Gad is so funny, and you know, I loved him as Olaf, and it was just such a gas being on that show with everybody and seeing everybody, you know, I, I hadn't seen Robin Lively in, in, in such a long time. And, you know, um, she's done a ton of stuff too. And my daughter actually is a, is a fan of that show that she's on, Gordon McGibbons, you know, um, which Billy Zapka was on too as a karate yeah. instructor, you know. <laughs> Did you see that episode? Oh, uh, no. Mike, I, I we're watching it on Yeah, it's, it's Gordimer Gibbons on Normal Street and it's an Amazon show. 
I'll have and to check Robin that out. Lively, Robin Lively, she plays the mom on that show. Okay. But there's an episode where she she takes karate and Billy Zapka is the karate sensei and he's is that very that much like from? Mr. Miyagi. Is that what that picture yes. everybody posted yeah. from? Okay. I've always wondered what that is, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's like, hey, it's it's Johnny, but it's not Johnny. He's playing this um other like he's playing a very like proper karate instructor, like like somebody who'd be doing Miyagi Do versus Kar- Cobra Kai, you know? Yeah. So I think it's a testament to Mr. Zabka's, um, uh, you know, abilities as an actor. Um, he's, um, you know, I, I, I enjoy watching Cobra Kai, but I, you know, here, here's the scenes I really like. I like the scenes where they, 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 they actually have a conversation and they look, come here, yeah. let, let's have a talk. And it reveals character like, you know, like, hey man, why'd you do this? And it's like, well, you did, no, I didn't. And then, you know, where they're actually, where you're, where you're learning about them and they're, you know, like, oh yeah. man, this is like a real human being. Those are the scenes I love the best. Um, yeah. And I love watching those two, but you know, um, those are, you know, William Zarka has got quite a range and so does Ralph Macchio, you know? And, and I think this show is starting to show that, you know, I mean, uh, the fans have always been fans, but these guys have legitimate chops in my opinion, yeah. you know? Um, and I, I love watching them. And um, there was some, some cool stuff in season three. I mean, you know, I, I'm sure everybody has seen it. I'm not doing any major spoilers, but you know, seeing the uh, the return to Okinawa was really yeah. cool. For me. I love I love those scenes, and and both Yuji and Tamlin are wonderful people. And I know this seems like a love fest, love Levi, where I'm saying everybody I met was wonderful. Um, <laughs> I don't have the same opinion of everybody I work with, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna like you know name names or anything. But yeah, most of the people I worked with were were wonderful people. And on set, everybody nobody was mistreated yeah. on set. You know, but you know. Um, and you know, Sean and I are tight. He's he's a good friend of mine. He's always had my back, you know. But um, yeah, that's <laughs> that's what I think. What was it like to uh, be in the documentary for Pat Morita more than Miyagi, though? Well, you know, um, I'm good friends with Kevin Derrick, who um, the director. Yes, sir. He's he's actually a, a, a karate student under Sensei Demura, and um, he had asked me to be in the real Miyagi, the the Fumio Demura. Biography. Yeah, I've seen that one too. Yeah, and um, you know what I like about you? You've seen most of the things. You've really done your research, and you're a true fan. You know, so I don't yeah. have to explain stuff to you. You already know it, man. This is great. But um, he asked me, "Hey, would you like to be in the More Than Miyagi documentary also, and you know, to talk about your experiences?" And um, there was a little bit more. I got to. T- I got a chance to tell what my favorite scene was in the Karate Kid movie. Um, which was cut out for time purposes, but um, yeah. Kevin, Kevin has actually saved that clip and he's going to actually post that clip as an outtake soon. So you may see that. And I get to talk about what my favorite scene in Karate Kid was, you know, and I got a chance to, to talk a little bit about my, my personal experience with Pat Morita, which was positive, you know? So um, I was, it's an honor being part of that, you know, just, just being part of the, the, you know, the greatness that was Pat Morita, you know, I think this documentary is great because it shows his early life, which you know was was, you know, traumatic, yeah. difficult, yeah. And you know <clears throat> what he had to go through, and the fact that you know he had these demons. You know, a lot of us have them. You know, we're, we are very imperfect beings. No one's perfect, and you know, I, I think that's great for people to see. It, it it's sad, but it shows a different side and, and it actually makes me have more respect for him and a deeper understanding for what he had to go through, you know, for his entire life. Can you talk anything about project X or whatever it's called? Some kind of, <laughs> I can, I can project X is um, it's a web series that I'm producing and we say project X because we don't like to post so much about it online, but I keep it under wraps. I'll talk time. about it. It's yeah. Um, you know, it's just a, it's a web series that is going to be called Immortal Immortal Hands, Immortal Hands, Immortal Hands. and it's a yeah. Project X is just sort of like, hey, we're working on Project X. Yeah. You know, people are like, what is that? You know, but mainly it's because um, when I when I post online, like in, on Facebook and things like that, I um, you know the director says and the ex- executive producer kind of wants to say, well, don't actually put 
bad, but you know, I can talk yeah. about it in a show like this because it's yeah. not, it, 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 the pilot's going to be released soon anyways. But um, it's a web series. It's a throwback to the old Kung Fu movies of the 70s and ninja movies. And there's some Highlander uh, thrown in there, you know. Um, so the, the basic story is it's a bunch of immortals who have been around. They're, 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 they're like, they live for hundreds of years. They've been around living amongst the people and they all have these martial arts abilities. And they're looking for this magical elixir that will extend their lives because a lot of them are reaching the end of their life cycle. So even though they live for long, long periods, it's not like they are truly immortal, but they have to drink this elixir and then they'll be given this um, you know, extended life span. But there's like only like one vial left. So they're yeah. all looking for it. And um, I, I'm the leader of, I'm sort of like the super villain of the um, series. My character's name is Shaw. And um, I'm sending out people to go find this elixir and bring it back to me. And um, basically when these immortals meet, they, they, they agree to fight and then it's to the death. And then, you know, even if somebody says, no, I don't want to fight you, uh, or I, you know, you, you're obligated to kill your opponent. So it's yeah. really interesting. Um, kind of like what you're doing with the Mandalorian, you know, and just, you know, whoever, whoever has the Beskar spear or, you know, is the yeah. rightful heir, you know, and you, and you have to fight for it. You can't just be given it. So that's where we are with that. It's, um, we're supposed to begin actual production on it in, in a few weeks. Uh, it, it really depends on um, where we are with the lockdown and things the like pandemic. That. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, filming, people are filming things, you know, I was able to film things, you know, recently, but you just have to be, you have to be careful about how you're doing it. You have to, you know, follow safety protocols, you know, so that involves making sure everyone's getting tested, making sure that, you know, everybody's being yeah. safe. Um, you know, there's this protocol you have to follow. And, you know, fortunately it's a small crew, you know, we have a small cast, but I think you'll enjoy it because you'll get to see a little bit more of my acting and, you know, for better or worse, you know, I mean, it, it's, you know, um, I get to play kind of an over the top villain. So, you know, I, you know, it's like more, ha, ha, you know, yeah, like Terry Silver sort of. I definitely sort of. have more lines than I did when yeah. Kind of, yeah, a little bit more, like a little bit over the top, you know, where I'm just like, you know, mm, let's see, you know, how are they going to take over the world? Yeah. You know, that kind of like, you know, almost like James Bondish kind of like, you know, it's like, okay, it's a little over the top, but it kind of fits the, you know, it fits the, the, the vibe of the show, you know, but uh, I'll keep you posted, you know, and um, awesome. once we post the, the, once we post the pilot, which is about eight minutes long, I'll definitely make sure you, you get that and you can, and you can share that because that's a lot of fun. You know, it's about eight minutes and, you know, it opens up with these guys and you think you're in this old Kung Fu movie, but it, it takes place in present day. You know, and it's like these guys are like, you know, hua, 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 hua. you know, it's 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 kind of yeah. like that old Shaw Brothers film. Um, but it's it's really cool because we get to kind of pay tribute to some of the things that, you know, we grew up with. And I say we I'm talking about Jim Towns, who's my director. He, he directs and edits all the episodes of 52 Masters. And he is really good filmmaker, really good director. And um, we've done a lot of things together and we're going to continue to produce cool stuff. So but thanks for asking about that. Yeah, uh, what was it like to have that big reunion at the Hollywood show? Like with all the Karate Kid people? Oh, oh I yeah, I... you know what? Um, I was invited to that by um, Sean Kanan. And, um, you know, he, he's always trying to include me in stuff, which I really appreciate. And, and so he said, hey, man, they're doing this Hollywood autograph show. And I'd never done one of those before. And he says, basically, you show up with a bunch of pictures and people – will pay you money to sign things. And I'm like, they're going to pay me to sign things? And he says, yeah. And I'm like, okay, are you sure? You know, and he says, yeah, yeah. It, 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 you know, people are going to this thing and they, they understand that they're supposed to pay you money to sign stuff. So I'm like, well, okay. So I get there and Daryl was there and I got a chance to meet Rob Garrison. Um, I had met him once before. Um, he and William Zabka, while we were filming Karate Kid 3, um, they showed up to the set one day just to say hi. And I, I got a chance to meet Rob years and years and years ago, you know. And um, he's like, wow, this is like a new generation of Cobra Kai, man. Crazy, you know. And um, so I met Rob. 
you know, he was near the end of his life. I did not know that he was sick, you know, but I shook his hand and I told him how much, yeah, I said, look, I, I'm really nice to see you and uh, I appreciate your work. And he was very kind, you know, I had no idea he was really sick, you know, and, um, you know, then he passed, you know, and, you know, that episode in season two where they have that reunion, you know, it, it's even yeah. more sad when you watch it now because it's like, oh my gosh, Rob was, you know, he was really dying, you know? Yeah. Um, so it, that was that, that was actually my favorite episode, you know, of season two, that episode there. Um, oh, the whole gang back together for sure. Yeah, that was so good. It was so good. You know, just uh, the way that, you know, I, they, I think they did that was just well done. Um, so, you know, Marty Cove was at this autograph show. And um, so here's an inter interesting story. You know, uh, on Instagram a few months, uh, maybe a year ago, it was some time ago, there was a picture posted of Marty Cove sitting in a makeup chair. Oh, yeah. And that has him beside uh, Thomas, too. Yeah. I took those pictures on set when I was on Karate Kid 3 with my old film camera. I took those. Yeah, I and went through and seen all those. These are good pictures. Yeah. They, they, so I went through my album and I posted those and I guess either Jesse Cove or Martin, I'm not sure who runs his account. Um, they, 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 they reposted that. And, you know, of course he said, you know, I hope I see my old friend again, which was the first, like, is Harry Silver coming back? You're right. This was right before season three. Yeah. So um, that was cool. I still, I, I, I hung on to that photograph and I took it to the autograph show. And I handed it to Martin Cove. And it's funny because he, he looked at it and says, this is really great. Where's this from? <laughs> and I said, yeah, it's from Karate Kid 3, sir. I, I, I took this picture on, uh, on set when I was with you. And he goes, oh. And he, he puts his hand out. I, I said, this for you. You can have it. And he says, oh. He shook my hand. He goes, you're a good guy. Thank you very much. I really appreciated it. You know, so I was happy to, you know, I, I could have kept it, you know, but I'm like, you know what, this is yours, you know, and yeah. I felt really good. Now I got the other picture of Thomas Ian Griffith. I still have that one. I'm hanging on to that in case I yeah. ever run into Thomas and I'll give that to him when he, when I run into him, but you know, he's very elusive. He's, he's yeah. a hard photo. He's slippery. Yeah. You can't, <laughs> you can't really get in contact with him. Nobody can. Yeah. He's like, he's holed up in the back cave with his wife, man. But you know, um, you know, who knows? Maybe we will see more of him soon. You know, that's, that's what seems to be the indication. So we shall see. But, um, that, that, you know, that autograph show, you know, getting back to that, the people who showed up to that thing were just really nice. Some of them were from out of state, you know, and I was just, just so uh, humbled and flattered and honored that people would want me to sign things. And, you know, I had people bring in their Karate Kid 3 posters. They had it all ready to go. And then they had a little post-it slip and it said, like, okay, right where they wanted me to sign it, they had put it right there on the poster. Sounds That's like it. me at Comic-Con. <laughs> They're like, okay, this, you know, and they had different colors, right? They were very organized and said, sir, can you please sign this here? You know, and they'd be like, you know, can you put your, 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 your character's name in, you know, in parentheses or whatever. So it was like, great, you know, no problem, you know? And um, that was a really cool experience, you know? Um, you know, he, in, in my policy right now regarding autographs is that, you know, honestly, if somebody really wants my autograph, I'm happy to send it as long as basically my, 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 it doesn't cost me anything, you know? So like, I, I'm happy to sign, I'm happy to send them out. Um, it's usually like 10 bucks to cover my, you know, my postage because I put it in a cardboard envelope. And yeah. I send it out. But I, you know, that, that's not something that I, 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 is is a business thing for me you know and it is for some people and that's great you know but i'm just kind of like happy that okay sure you know if it makes you happy i'm happy to do it so you know if somebody like sends me a picture of me and they want me to sign it but they've enclosed like a self-addressed stamp stamp envelope or something yeah i'll sign it and send it back you know i, I yeah. just want to i just want to make fans happy now, now look i don't have millions of fans so right now that's feasible to me if i had a million fans i'd be like i physically yeah. just do this you know but uh i just want to make people happy you know and if doing something like that is going to make somebody's day or make somebody's week and they, you know they, they put it on their wall and they can show it off to their friends you know add to their collection i'm happy to do that so i'm saying that publicly right now if you know to you and and everything else um yeah i actually have a i got a stealth advanced stamp i've been meaning to send to you i haven't sent it out yet though i printed out i print out a few pictures so i'll, I'll probably send that next week 
Brother, send it out to me. I'll give you my address afterwards. And I'll be all happy. Right. I'll cool. send it all in one thing, put it back in there and just, you know, dude, don't worry about it. You know, because you're having me on your show and everything like that, you know, it, don't even worry about it. I'll take care of it. You know, happy to yeah. do it. You know, because look, you're, you're keeping me, you're keeping me alive. You're keeping my name out there. And, uh, you know, it's just a real honor and pleasure to being able to talk to you and talk to some of your viewers out there. Yeah, I really appreciate it. So no I, my la this is my last question. Um, sure thing. So I saw that picture of you and John Saxon. How how did you meet him? Oh, uh, you know, John Saxon, um, Enter the Dragon was a real big influence on me, you know, because of Bruce Lee. And I, you know, and, and I loved John Saxon in that film. And um, I had a chance to meet John Saxon in years past when he was younger and actively training in martial arts. You know, a couple of my former instructors actually you know, taught him as well. So there was, um, I used to train with a man named Tadashi Yamashita, who I got my, um, my, my karate black belt under and under his student, Richard Rubago. And um, so I remember working out karate with John Saxon at his house one time because uh, yeah. Sensei, Sensei Yamashita took me to his house. And then years later, I was training in Gracie Jiu Jitsu with um, Hoist Gracie. And this is Hoist Gracie before UFC. He still had hair, he didn't speak English, and his brother Hordeon. And I'm in his garage and I'm rolling with John Saxon being his partner. And John Saxon was a blue belt at the time. And then so years later, I, um, my good friend, Michael Matsuda, took over Dragon Fest from Gerald Okamura and uh, John Saxon was there one year. So I was like, oh, this is, I got to get a picture with him. So um, I, I actually paid. I paid $35 yeah. to get his signature on uh, that picture with me. And um, it's, it's um, I took a picture with him. But then there's a picture of Bruce Lee and John Saxon together that I have in my dojo that John signed. And so um, at that time, I took the picture with John Saxon. And that's one of my most cherished moments, you know, just being able to meet yeah. you know, one, one, of, one of the people that I admired. Now you know, he's kind of, passed on, so yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. But um, yeah, you know, and he had a long, long career. Uh, just, man, you know, he was in everything, you know, and just a very talented man to be sure. Yeah, that, that's pretty cool, actually. My dad used to be under the Gracies. Uh, oh, really? He, yeah, he's a black belt in BJJ, but yeah, he was under the Gracies. We actually went out there in Torrance uh, one time and uh, got to train at the Gracie Academy and everything. Oh, did you train at the Academy uh, on Artesia? Is that the one that Henry it's, and Kudo run? Yeah, it's the old one, not the new one they built. It was the older one. The one, the two-story building, the brick building on Carson Street. I, I, think. Can't, I, I think so, yeah. Yeah, it was an older building, right? Yeah, um, like an old warehouse or something that they like. Uh, okay, this this must have been the one on Artesia where um, it's not two story, but it's um, the parking is really like they have a parking lot in there, but it's really limited. And uh, yeah, 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 that one, yeah, yeah, and that's the one that's run that was run by Henner and Huron, right? Yeah, until they built that new one, I think. Yeah, yeah. I. Uh, Horion was my first uh, jujitsu instructor, you know, and this was when jujitsu, nobody knew what it was, right? Pre UFC. And he came to the local college, you know, and, you know, he was demonstrating. And basically the, the idea was, you know, anybody who wants to, you know, um, try to beat us, they're welcome to, and we'll use our jujitsu, but we won't hit you, but you can yeah. hit us. And of course people were like, okay, we're going to do this. Right. And, yeah. um, you know, they were very successful at being able to, you know, close the gap, get the clinch, go for the takedown. And, and at that time, people were just having a, nobody could nobody could do anything against it. The, the You know, the people who gave them the hardest time were the wrestlers, you know, because yeah. they're used to that game. And, you know, of course, everybody trains, everybody cross trains now, everybody trains. And, you know, I think if you're going to be a fighter in the in, a, in MMA, you got to have a ground game, whether it be BJJ. Yeah wrestling or something you can, I don't think you can enter into that game without having a strong ground game and um, very very important so um, much respect you know BJJ one of the premier arts to be sure yeah that I actually went from jiu-jitsu to wrestling actually that's phenomenal so you got the best of both worlds yeah because I'll you know I'll wrestle four years in high school and then see what goes from there but yeah. Well, you know what I like about wrestling? I like the the ability to go from the feet to the ground, but I also the the conditioning and the speed of, you know, like when you go up against wrestlers, suddenly they're on your back and so they're, they're they're doing these Yeah. Yeah. 
So I, I think that's phenomenal um, that you have both backgrounds in both. I think that yeah. definitely that definitely is an edge for you. Yeah, I really just want to thank you for coming on. It's really an honor to have you on the show. Oh, man, dude, the honor is mine. Thank you for reaching out. It's my pleasure. And let me know whatever else I can do for you. You know, and I'm, I'm, I'm here for the people. I'm here for the fans. And uh, I'm happy to come on again and keep you posted about anything else that's going on. Hopefully, we'll be talking about Dennis returning to Cobra Kai soon. Anything can happen. We shall see. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Have a good one. Thank you, Levi. Take care.